So far in this season of Extreme Reloading, we've been working in parallel on the 9mm Luger pistol cases and the 556 by 45 NATO rifle cases. Well, today we're not going to do anything with the 556. We're kind of done with that, at least for a while. We're going to be talking about expanding, and we're going to be expanding the mouths the mouths of these 9mm Luger cases. This is one of those necessary steps that we need to take care of. So it's part of those bare necessities um, that we need to do for the 9mm Luger. What it does is it's going to flare or bell out the mouth of that case. And this is the reason why all pistol um, die sets will have three dies in them and rifle die sets, standard die sets, will have only two dies. Those two dies are the normally full length resizing die and a bullet seating die. Well we get those same two dies with the pistol cases but we also get what's called an expander die. This is a Hornady expander die for the 9mm Luger. One of the things I wanted to mention also, been meaning to mention, uh, is the die lock rings. There's a bunch of different types out there and I will say in my experience Hornady makes the best die lock rings. Um, in fact, I buy them sometimes a pack of six and, and what I do, if I, I've replaced the die lock rings on pretty much everything else that I have. The RCBS die lock rings, I don't really like it. They're, uh, if you use them, if you use them enough, you will see that that little hex key lock mechanism that they have set up, um, it's, it's, it's gonna probably end up stripping out on you. I've had so much trouble with that. Even if you try to be really careful, I have, I really prefer these Hornady lock rings. I like the flat that's on it. If you need to get a, a wrench on it, so much easier to deal with. Anyway, uh, I do like that. Now we're going to take a look at what this really does. And if we look at it from the inside, you'll see that there is a little expander mandrel inside there that rather rapidly tapers outward to a larger size. Now to affect this correctly, to affect a correct uh, flare on those 9mm pistol cases or 45 ACP, etc. Um, you may not see the actual flaring on the case. Don't necessarily need that, but you'll normally you'll be able to feel it if you run your fingers up on that case after it's been flared or after it's been belled out, expanded, uh, you'll feel just that little bit of expansion. Now the reason why you're doing this is so you can take a bullet and just get it started inside that, that case. Now that, that case is already going to be primed, going to have powder in it. You want to be able to place that bullet inside that just enough to get it started, that stubby little thing, and run it up into the bullet seating die without the bullet falling out. If you don't do it at all, you're probably going to end up bending the neck of that or the mouth and neck of that case itself um, and maybe spilling you know, powder out, those sorts of things. Um, so it is a definitely a necessary step. Don't do too much though because uh, if you do uh, put on too much of a flare, you're going to end up prematurely ending the life of that case because that neck right at the mouth will split over time. Um, what you're doing is you're resizing, you're flaring, seating the bullet, and then you're tapering it back down. That's a lot of work on that mouth. And if you flare too much, oh yeah, it's really easy to put the bullet in, uh, but you're going to end up, end up cracking that mouth and neck area of the case and have to throw it away. So you don't need that much. You just need enough to get the bullet to seat, start seating.
Next, let's expand a rifle case. And by the way, I should note that I normally do not work on, you know, 5.56 and 9mm and 308 and all this different stuff all at the same time. No, 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 that is not good practice. Uh, I'm doing it for demonstration uh, uh, here on this video, but my recommendation to you is work with only one round at a time. If we're focusing today on 5.56, that's what we're going to do. We're going to work on case prep for a batch of 5.56 or case prep for a batch of 9mm or, you know, 308 Winchester, whatever it happens to be. Uh, so, again, I don't recommend doing things in parallel, flip-flopping from one to another all in one session. Concentrate, focus on what you're doing, do a great job at it, and you'll definitely be able to uh, create safe and reliable ammunition. Now, back to expanding uh, the rifle cases. We don't do that, I don't do that, any of that sort of stuff for my 5.56. When we talk about expanding the neck of a rifle case, notice we expanded the mouth of the pistol case, now we're going to talk about expanding the neck of a rifle case. The only reason why we do this, and it's certainly not a mandatory step, not a necessity, but the reason why we do it is to improve the consistency and ultimately improve the precision of our uh, ammunition that we're creating. Now what this is doing is I am using these 21st century um, expander die bodies. That's the die body right there. Notice another Hornady lock ring on this. And inside this die body is a mandrel, an expander mandrel. And each of those expander mandrels will have its size printed right on it. Now you're probably going to have to experiment a little bit with the um, size of, of the expander mandrel that works well with your rifle and your particular load. The one that works really well, <laughs> the one that works really well for me is this 0 0.3060 size mandrel. That works really, really well for my 308 Winchester Ruger Precision Rifle. Looking at it here, again, it looks kind of similar to what we saw. It just doesn't, uh, it doesn't flare or taper out as rapidly or as much as we saw with the pistol rounds. This was their older die body. Since that time, I also purchased a second one of these same die bodies, but this one has a window cut into it. Uh, so since I have two of these now, I use that one. It's set up just for that 308 Winchester. This one, since I had a second, I set up for my 6.5 Grendel. Same process though. The expander mandrel that I'm using here is 0.2625. Remember that the 6.5 Grendel, 6.5 millimeter, is a 0 0.264, 264 caliber. And I like this quite a bit. It's actually better, I would say, than the other one because of this window. I can watch that case come up into that window uh, and make sure that I don't bottom it out and, and kind of wreck the mouth. And then I'm back to working on it that way. This is one of the last steps that we do. Uh, again, it's not necessary, not mandatory, but it does improve the precision of our ammunition and it really helps us along the way toward affecting the correct neck tension. We're going to talk a lot about neck tension later on in this, episode, uh, in this series of Extreme Reloading this season. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it too much right now. All right, I've got all of my 9mm cases flared or expanded at the mouth. And now it's time for one of the last steps in basic case preparation. And that is, I'm going to clean these with my ultrasonic cleaner. Now again, uh, this is not a mandatory step. It's not one of those bare essentials. You know, I think one of the reasons why we clean the brass. Number one, a lot of folks will say that it extends the life of the brass. 
It might. I'm not so sure of that. I'm not absolutely convinced of that. Uh, some people might say that it actually improves the consistency of the ammo. I've, I've never seen that. Never seen that at all. Um, here's what I think it is. Um, we spend an awful lot of time preparing our cases, perfecting our loads, and we go out to the range, and I think we have some pride in that ammunition that we have just crafted. And if it doesn't look nice, we might kind of, you know, like someone might see with their nice, shiny, brand new factory ammo, gee, my stuff really looks nice. When we shoot, we'll probably beat that other ammo. Yeah, so that kind of gives us a little feeling of satisfaction. But uh, we kind of want it to look good. We want it to look nice, nice and shiny. Nothing wrong with that, I suppose. I think that's a lot to it. You don't have to do it. And if you do clean the brass, sometimes absolute bare minimum, nice wipe down is really all you need. We want to make sure we don't have any lubricant, anything coating the outside of those cases uh, as we proceed through actual reloading and, um, and shooting that ammunition at the range. Uh, there are several ways to do that, of course. Like I said, the bare minimum, wipe it down. You can use a dry medium. I used um, corn cob media for quite a few years in a tumbler. Still have my old tumbler here. Um, you can use that approach. A little bit messy, dusty, those sorts of things. One of the problems I've noticed with it also uh, is little chunks of that corn cob media will get stuck in the flash hole. And you got to make sure every one of those flash holes is absolutely clear, you know, to have good, safe, reliable, and, and quality ammo out, out when you're firing. Uh, or you can go to some wet media. That's what I'm doing. I'm using an ultrasonic cleaner. And I have, I've tried so many different types of solutions. I have tried the Hornady one-shot brass cleaning solution. I have tried the Frankfurt Arsenal, the blue stuff, and I've also most recently tried the Creedmoor Sports uh, Sonic Cleaning Solution. They're all a horse apiece as far as I can tell. I can't find one that really, really works better than another or anything that works worse than all the rest. Nothing like that. Choose what you like. Choose maybe what's on sale. Uh, dilute it to that normally 40 to 1 ratio and you're all set. There's another approach to cleaning, and that's where it's almost a combination or a hybrid approach to a dry type of medium, but here in this case we're using stainless steel pins, tiny little pins, uh, not so tiny that's going to poke you, but you know, they're called pins, uh, with some liquid in it, and uh, that will, it will really, really clean those things up. Nice, shiny, uh, clean, uh, pretty looking brass. Uh, so take your choice, whatever you want to do. Uh, there are probably something coming out in the future that will um, supersede all of these things as well. But we're going to go ahead and do that. Then we'll catch back up in the next episode of Extreme Reloading. And we're going to talk about mill SERP brass, military surplus brass. There's a couple of things you need to do when you're dealing with that type of brass that we really didn't talk about much so far. We're going to cover that in the next episode. Uh, and then the following episode, we're going to look at uh, some more case prep, but some specific extra extreme steps that we take for precision rifle uh, ammunition. So you don't want to miss that, but thanks again for watching this one. Take care.